Have you ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix? If so, consider sending it my way. Just go to AsTheRavenDreams.com and click the button to do so. And of course, thank you. This happened to me for the second time today, and it freaked me out. The first time it happened, I wanted to share a post here, but I just didn't feel like it was enough on its own. I honestly don't know if this could be classed as a glitch, but the feeling I get from this when it happens is that the concept of time isn't real, or linear, and we have the ability to basically experience things from the future without even noticing until after it's happened. It sounds crazy, but I'll explain. So, here it is. This has happened to me twice now. I'm an artist, and both times this happened has been when I have an idea in my head, and I'll scour through reference images until I find the one. Not that I have an exact known building in my mind, just something that looks how I imagine the scene in my mind. I'll choose a building that I don't know anything about, just that I like the look of. The first time was a few months ago. I was drawing an Amsterdam street scene. I had to look through various blogs, Instagram accounts, and Google searches until I found a building I felt was just right to draw. I started drawing it, and then went to make a coffee and have a quick break from drawing. I sat down with my coffee, and was mindlessly flicking through Instagram stories when someone I know who lives in Amsterdam shared a photo, and what was in the background. The exact same damn house that I had just drawn. Now, I know what you're thinking. You probably think I just thought they were the same building because the canal houses often have similar features. I took two screenshots and compared everything, from the window frames, the shape of the roof, the things outside the building, the tree, the stones on the pavement, the building next door. It was 100% the same building. I also know Amsterdam quite well myself, and can say with 100% certainty that it is the exact same building. I messaged the guy that I know, and I said, is that a famous building or something? And he said it wasn't, and that he hadn't even specifically photographed that building. It was a regular Amsterdam building. A nice one, but nothing extraordinary compared to every other building out there. Nothing that makes it stand out more than others. I explained to him what had happened, and I showed him my screenshots and my drawing. And he was equally as freaked out, too. Please, bear in mind that this all happened within the space of an hour or less. Today, the same thing happened again with another building. Two days ago, I was scouring the internet looking for references for a London warehouse, Victorian period. I already had the idea of how it would look in my mind. I just needed to find a photograph to draw from that matched. So, I looked through hundreds of warehouses and picked one. It had a nice curved shape to the roof and some white writing on the wall that said Spratt's Patent Limited. So, I drew it. Weird fact, this warehouse was also next to a canal, so both my drawings that I'm referring to are canal scenes. Today, I was eating my dinner, and the TV was on. A still image flashed on the screen, and guess what it was? It was the exact same building that I had just drawn two days ago. Same angle, and everything. I was once again so freaked out. The program was not even anything about the building. It was just a still image that quickly flashed up to show where they were filming. Some quick statistics for you. In Amsterdam, there were believed to be around 7,000 historical canal houses. 
so what made me choose this one? I can't find any estimation online of how many Victorian warehouses there are in London, but I grew up there, and I can tell you that London is full of historical buildings and warehouses and wharves. Lots of folks will just tell me it's a coincidence, but it personally, in my soul, I feel there's more to it than that. As an artist, I don't just draw anything for the sake of it. I draw things that come from my soul, and where do my ideas come from? In these instances, I can honestly tell you that I feel like my ideas must have come from the near future. Time cannot be as linear as we believe it is. I hope this makes an interesting read, and I would love to hear your thoughts or similar stories. I have what I thought was micro-dreams. Dreams that happen in seconds as I nod off to sleep. But where I think this, for me, is a glitch, is when I'm having them, they're just fragments of some random person's life. And they take place in places I've never been, involve people that I've never met. When I'm there, I'm one of them. And... That world is real. I know what that person does, and I have no knowledge of me in this world. For example, the glitch nod happens, and boom. I'm on a landline phone telling someone, I've been on the force for longer than any of those kids. And I feel like a 60-something worn-out cop frustrated by the fact that he now takes orders from someone a quarter of his age. Then... Boom. I'm jolting away at my computer less than a minute past in what felt like 20. I have too many to list, but the one that changed my view on these happened several years ago. I was at the computer, I nodded off, and I was suddenly in a suit with a suitcase standing in an upscale urban area. I was still me this time as in I was aware of who I was in this world, or this life that I currently exist within. I had actual control of this body. I felt the breeze in the air, experienced all the smells, the sensations of the shoes that I had on being new and not broken in yet. I felt the weight of the suitcase. I smelled coffee in the air, and then turned and saw a coffee shop with the place where people could lock up their bicycles. It was dark, but the sky was mostly clear, just some passing clouds. The streets in this area weren't asphalt. They looked like brick pavers, and it wasn't a normal busy street. In fact, the area that I was in wasn't busy at all. I didn't see anyone else but I could hear the traffic not far away. It was just after 10.30, almost 10.40. I, slash he, was wearing a non-digital watch. The ground was slightly wet, like it had rained earlier that day. I was standing near a bus stop. I was taking in everything as I looked around, trying to record this all to memory. Then I started to feel like I was becoming this person. I somehow knew I worked at the building that I was standing by. To my right, there was a tall skyscraper. It was modern looking, but had very distinct architecture. I was so amazed by how clear everything was, and how vivid the colors were. Like watching an HD movie after years of only watching VHS ones. I looked up at the moon, just emerging from thinning clouds. It was the moon right before a full moon that almost looks full. I was so amazed by how clearly I could see it. I realized that this body I was in had really good eyesight. Mine in this world needs glasses to see anything more than three foot away. Well, I jolted back to sitting at my PC. I said, I've got this fresh in my head, 
and I went on to Google Earth looking for this place to see if it was real or not. But then how do I find it? I knew it was within the U.S., because all the signs were in English and were clearly familiar to me being an American. It was just after 1040 as well, so it was likely in the same time zone. I searched for two hours, and I found the exact place. I dropped into Street View, and a chill went through me like a million volts. Everything was there. The bus stop, the coffee shop, the bike racks, the building. I didn't know what to think. It was late, so I saved the spot on my Google Earth and went to bed. I wish I could share the exact location, but that computer crashed over a year ago, and I have since changed my Facebook that I originally posted the information to as a record. I just spent an hour looking for it again at work. I'm in shipping and receiving, so it's not out of the norm to be on Google Earth so I know how to find locations with little information. I can't remember the city. Ohio State or Michigan. I think the Matrix deleted it. It's possible the coffee shop went out of business and is now something different, but I found it last time by searching the building description. I'll keep looking for it in my free time, and I'll add it here if I do find it. Just a note, it's been over a month since I wrote this the first time. Still no luck in finding it. Being an artist, I'll attempt to draw the location as I remember the topography, and I'll add a link to this post if I get around to it. To answer or clarify, I don't know if this was an alternate reality, a glitch, or a road not taken. I don't know. But being somewhat rational, I can't say what it was or wasn't until I find this location again. Until that point... It's just another question mark that makes me the strange guy that I am. The brain is an amazing thing. I think people overlook this fact when in relation to glitches and quantum immortality experiences. Are we shifting realities? Or are we all dreaming or creating realities within our mind? These micro-dream glitches I get scream at me that something else is going on. Because when I'm in these experiences, I usually have no knowledge of this world. Or in case of experiences like this one, when I was aware of this world, it felt like the dream in that one was real. I was asked why I care so much about the nature of reality if I can't change anything. I said, because if this is a simulation or dream of a higher dimensional version of myself... I want it to know that I know, and I want better for humanity than for it to just be an entertainment or an experiment. We are people that love, create, suffering when we don't have to, and we deserve better. This happened a long time ago. I didn't know about this sub, so I had nowhere to talk about it. I'm glad I get to tell this story now, as it's pretty mundane, but weird enough to me that I'll never forget it. My friend and I took a trip to a nearby city and stopped at a gas station to grab something to drink and use the restrooms. He went in first, and while he was in there... I picked out my drink. I noticed Pineapple Fanta. I hadn't tried it before, but it sounded interesting, so I decided to give it a shot. I know that I didn't just grab the wrong one by mistake, either. I had to look closely to check the caffeine content of it, as I was trying to limit that at the time. When he got out, I handed him my drink and my debit card so he could get whatever he wanted and meet me in the car. It's important to mention that I'm fairly certain he would never do this as a prank or joke. We were really close at the time, 
But even outside of that, he wasn't ever known to do stuff like that. Messing with people never seemed to impress him much. It was also only the two of us anyways. So it's not like he could laugh about it with someone else. We drive somewhere else and start eating. I reach into the bag and grab our drinks, and somehow my pineapple Fanta is now orange Fanta. I said something along the line of, was there something wrong with the pineapple one? I know that's what I handed to you. He looked at the bottle and looked at me confused, and he said that he knew it was pineapple before too. He was actually going to ask me how it was, since it was kind of an unusual flavor. It really weirded us out for the rest of the day. I know I wouldn't have grabbed an orange one, even if I decided I wanted orange soda instead. I've always thought that orange Fanta was the worst orange soda, and definitely would have gotten Sunkissed or Fago instead. The only thing we've ever been able to come up with is that the cashier accidentally switched it out. But that makes us ask more questions than it answers. Why would she have one up at the counter? Why would it be nearby enough for her to accidentally grab the wrong one? She clearly wasn't drinking it. It was still sealed and cold. The whole thing reminds me of when variables and software mess up, and it reverts to something to a default value. Orange Fanta would certainly be the default Fanta if there was one. Maybe the simulation's code got mixed up in there somewhere. This happened over 30 years ago, and is something I have spoken about only to people that I trust. I've never been able to explain it. I was in college in New York, and my best friend came to visit me. I suggested that we go to a museum that I had to visit for a class assignment, and he was game to go. We set out to the subway, but we were arguing with each other. It was so silly, but serious, that I got into one subway car and he got into the car next to the one I got into. The door closed and I was still mad at him. But I thought about how silly it was to get mad at my friend who'd come all the way to spend time with me. Neither of us were sitting in our cars, but standing holding on to the metal poles that are independent of the chairs. I looked through the window between the cars as I was lamenting my behavior, and I saw him looking back at me. I remember thinking that, when the car stopped, I was going to hop out of my car and go over to his and apologize. The train came to the next station seconds later, but I was feeling too proud to apologize first. So, the doors closed, and I decided I would wait for the next station. I looked into the other car, and again he was looking at me, annoyed, still. However, I did record in my mind that he was dressed differently. This was the start of thinking that something was up. Prior to this, I'd only had one or two time slip experiences that were way less elaborate than this. The train stopped, and this time my heart was racing as I jumped out, and rushed over to his car to see whether he was in it. I recall a few people in the other car looking at me strangely, and needless to say, the experience was way, way, way too strange for me to continue to the museum, and I took the train back home. My mind was racing with, what did I just experience? When I got home, I was so antsy and weirded out by what I experienced I just sat out on the porch. An hour later, my friend was casually walking down the street towards me. He was wearing what I recalled him wearing when we first parted and stepped onto the train. I ran up to him and hugged him super tightly, and started to get really hysterical. I just kept hugging him and pelting questions at him. Where were you? What happened? Did you get on to the train? 
he looked at me very surprised, telling me that when I hopped on the train, he decided that he was not going to go, and just never got on to that train. I told him that I saw him as plain as day on the train, and I explained what he was wearing. We didn't say much more about it after that. He died six months later. I would experience something else with him before his passing, and I really appreciate this place to write this experience because it must be recorded. I wrote about my friend on the train, and I mentioned that he died six months later. Before he died, he was someone who used to write his name and address just randomly on things belonging to him, or in my journal or sketchbooks. I used to ask him why he did it, what mark he was trying to hold on to. He was an identical twin. His brother was slightly taller than he was. He would tell me all the time that he suspected that he was not going to live very long. He died at the age of 24. He was murdered by his older brother in a senseless argument where his brother stabbed him once in the chest. I was abroad at school at the time of the incident. He had called my parents for help moments before he died, and that also makes the whole thing even more tragic. Everything surrounding my friend those last few months had been extremely unusual. When I was home for summer vacation, before I went back to school, three months before his death, we walked about 15 to 20 miles together, talking about everything under the sun. His family and mine were amazed that we did it. When I went back to school, he would call me on the phone and say nothing at all and then we would hang up feeling as though we had a very long conversation. There was one point where, during one of these calls, he said how crazy it was that we were just listening to each other say nothing on the other end of the phone. We also wrote each other a lot. This was all pre-email days. I used to do ballet, so he and I would walk to my classes and talk, and then he would walk home. After he died, I got a card in the mail from him. He drew me sitting on the park bench that we would be happily chatting away on, but the image showed me sitting there with a portrait of him in a frame. His hunch was right, it seems. It was as though he always knew when he was going to die. I'll try to explain this the best that I can. It sounds inexplicable. This has never made sense to me, and I think about it on occasion because I could never figure it out. It happened about ten years ago. I don't want to say where I actually was, but it was a Midwestern town. It bothers me because it doesn't make sense. I was driving through a city of around 200,000 people, and my parents lived there, and the exit to get to their house was the last one before you left the city, driving east to west. I missed the exit, and I didn't want to swerve at the last minute because there was traffic on the interstate. But then, I left the city and anyone who lives in a Midwestern town knows that once you get past the last exit, you can go for miles before you even get a place that you can drive off on. So, basically, I figured I would just keep driving until I finally found a road to get off on and turn around. Anyways, I just kept driving. Then, I saw those big interstate signs that you see above you but they were all rusted, without the signs. Just the posts. I thought maybe it was due to road construction. I thought that maybe I had missed a detour. But at this point, I was paying attention, because I needed to get around and turn back. 
but there weren't any places to turn around, so I just kept driving. It didn't make any sense because there weren't lights anymore, and the road was getting worn out, like it hadn't been paved in years. Then there were trees, like lots of pine trees. It didn't make sense. I was kind of starting to panic because I didn't know where I was. I was sure that I didn't take a different route. The road started to get really old and the trees were dense, which didn't make sense, because this is a place with few trees. I slowed down because I was honestly scared and confused as to where I was, and I then saw some of those black and white roadblock signs just blocking the road. It did not make sense. Why would they be in the middle of the damn highway? They were just sitting there, blocking the actual interstate. I thought maybe I had gotten off the interstate, so I stopped in the middle of the road, thinking, okay, I'll just turn around. So I crossed the median and started to drive back. I felt lost, but I drove on the road and, without any turns... I came back and was on the damn same interstate. I don't get it. I turned off the exit and drove right to my parents' house. I was always on the same road and I never turned off except for the exit. I asked my parents if there was some kind of road construction going on and they said not that they knew of. I was very confused and really worried. I was so bothered by it. I kept thinking about how I was probably so aloof that it was just a mistake and I probably drove off in a different direction. When I left to go home a couple of days later, I wanted to make sure, so I went back on the exact same interstate and drove in the exact same direction. It was fine. There were no roadblocks, no trees, no nothing. I never turned off. I was always driving on the exact same road. That interstate was not the same place. I don't know, it bothers me to this day. I guess I wanted someone else's opinion as to what might have happened. P.S. I have no mental illness. I don't do drugs. I don't drink and drive. It was Sioux Falls, exit 29, on the west side of town, while I was traveling westbound on I-90. Sorry to keep adding, but I honestly believe that I was in a place that did not exist, or I wasn't supposed to be in. I can't think of any other explanation. It keeps going over my head over the years, and nothing else makes sense. I really don't know, it bothers me so much. Okay, so I'm making this post after telling people of my original experience, Where Did I Go?, which is the story in this video prior to this story. I really didn't want to explain this one, because I felt like it would just make my other experience less believable, but it really does bother me. This is one of the only two strange experiences I've ever had. I explained how I had an experience in the Midwest, and this also took place in the Midwest. This time, I was diverted on some obvious road construction around a town of about 10,000 people, so I took the detour. It was around 11 or 12 at night, and I just kept driving wherever the marker sent me. Anyone who has experienced road construction in the Midwest knows how this is. Random markers telling you to go every which way. I get how anyone could get lost. So, I was just going along the road signs. Somehow I must have gotten mixed up. I ended up on this giant bridge. Nothing on top, just a road above everything. I looked down and I saw lots of lights, like it was some sort of industrial area. But there were no people. At all. I didn't think it was too strange at the time. 
I thought maybe I was just driving over a power plant or something like that. But then, I got to the end of the bridge, and I didn't see any more signs. It was a town. But it looked run down, but not extremely old. I kind of wanted to stop and maybe ask someone where to go to get back onto the highway. There was no activity at all, though. I pulled into this parking lot, and the building looked like it hadn't been touched in ten or more years. I was kind of hoping that someone would drive by. It was super eerie. There was literally no one. No cars. Nothing. It felt really strange. Even late at night, I'd figure that I would see a light somewhere. I kept looking around, but everything was dark. All the buildings looked like they hadn't been touched in 10 or 20 years. I got a really bad feeling like I was not supposed to be here. Towns close down, I get it, but they are not supposed to look like this. This was around 2012, and those buildings looked like they hadn't been touched since the 90s. I decided I should just go, retrace my steps, and maybe get back to where I was. I went back across the huge bridge, and after I made it across the bridge, I turned off and then saw the detour signs again. I was so relieved, I made it back on the highway. When I went back home, I was visiting my parents for a few days, I tried to find where the hell I was at. I could never find that place again. There was no giant bridge, no town that looked 20 years old and abandoned. I've searched and driven through the area multiple times. It doesn't exist, and it bothers me. P.S. This is the second and only one of two odd experiences I've had. Again, I've never done drugs, I have no history of mental illness, and I don't drink and drive. I have no other strange experiences beyond these two, and I'll answer any questions that I can. And edit... I truly do believe that this was some sort of glitch in the Matrix, and it makes sense to me to post it here. This is pretty lame, but it's been circling my brain all morning, and it's on theme for the sub, so here goes. My husband and I went to Home Depot for a couple of things. We went in through the garden department as I needed a new pot for a plant. We picked out the pot, and we're about to head inside, and I said, let's come back out and pay out here so I can get a bag of dirt, too. Since we didn't have a cart, and the pot was kind of big, my husband says, I'm going to leave this out here and we'll just grab it when we come back out. So, he sets it down in an out-of-the-way spot near the door that goes from the garden section into the store. We picked up the rest of the stuff that we needed, and I decided to make a quick trip to the restroom before leaving. The husband says he'll go back to the garden, get the dirt, and pay. When I came out the door back into the garden, I saw the pot still sitting in the spot that we left it. My husband has ADHD, so this is not at all unexpected. I grabbed it and hustled towards the checkout where he is in line. About halfway there, I saw that he had grabbed a cart, and the pot was in the cart. I figured he came out a different door and grabbed the same pot from the display area rather than the one that we set aside, for whatever reason. So, I took the pot that I'd picked up from our stashed spot and ran it back over to the display to put it back. I didn't really think anything of it until later last night, when I mentioned it for some reason. He was like, what are you talking about? I picked the pot up from where we left it. I said, hmm, that's weird because so did I. So we must have picked up two nested together and not noticed. He then said, no, 
I know for a fact there was not another pot there because I didn't pick it up. I kind of kick-flipped it into the cart to see if I could, which is totally something he would do. So I couldn't have done that with nested pots without noticing. We confirmed with each other the spot that we'd left it, and the spot that we each picked it up from, and we were definitely on the same page. The only reasonable explanation we can think of is that someone else at Home Depot would have had to pick out the same pot from the display area, halfway across the garden department, and left it in the exact random spot in the three to four minute time span between my husband picking up ours and me coming out of the restroom. Granted, the odds of that happening are higher than the odds of a pot magically appearing, but the whole situation was really weird and random. And here we are again at the end of another Glitch in the Matrix collection. And hopefully, it was a collection that you enjoyed. Definitely some weirdness, as always, every week. They just get weirder and weirder, don't they? Or maybe they just start feeling weirder because we know they're all true and that they, we've heard them so many times that it just it, it feels like it compounds the weirdness into our existence. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. It's just weird stuff. You know how it is. Anyways. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit that thumbs up button. That really, really helps the channel a lot. You can also subscribe if you're new. Support by going to Patreon or joining down below, where for a dollar a month you can get early access to content like this. And then finally, you can leave me a comment. Typically, people who leave me comments on these videos do so including the word of the week so they can have their pictures, pictured above, and comments shown on the screen for a few moments while I talk about the word of the week. A huge thank you to everybody who did so last week. Again, shown above. And this week, the word of the week is one that has a lot of benefit. And that's the word. I gotta stop doing that to you. It's benefit. B-E-N-E-F-I-T, which means something that promotes or enhances well-being, an advantage, help or aid, or to be helpful or useful to as a transitive verb. So, let's see if I can give you an example. Yes, I can. For instance, you leaving a comment on this video has a major benefit to me. It is beneficial because the more interactions a video has, the higher up YouTube ranks it. YouTube rankings are what push videos into the algorithm, so please, if you would, leave me a comment using the word benefit or just telling me how you're doing and what you thought of the video. Either one is, is applicable. But anyways, I hope you all have a beautiful day. Hope I see you in the next one. But until then, my beautiful friends, sleep well.